The 2022 Toyota Tundra is coming really soon, and we've sort of discovered some information about this vehicle, what we think is going to be happening with it. So yeah, the current Tundra has been on sale for about 14, 15 years now, depending on how you count it. The current platform is getting kind of old. Ford has done a complete refresh back in 2015, and they just did another refresh recently of the F-150. We also have competition from the Chevy Silverado 1500, and of course, the Dodge Ram 1500. So there's a lot of big midsize, midsize big trucks out there that are competing with this, and the sales figures have been pretty dismal for the Tundra as of late, but Toyota's looking to change that. In fact, Toyota just dropped a teaser video. Let's see what we can figure out from that. Now, there's definitely one thing we can learn from that, and that is Toyota has a big budget for dry ice. I've done some Photoshop work and I've done a couple of screen grabs and I've tried to piece together what this might look like and this is pretty much the best that I've been able to come up with so far. So we can see that we have these interesting looking LED headlights. It looks like under the hood, I'm not sure if this is going to be a production or not, but we do have these six little LEDs arranged in a pair of threes and then we have some other LEDs up front presumably on the front bumper. So it looks like to be LED central, but we can't really tell a lot about the design. But we do know it's going to dominate. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm out of new jokes. That's the best one that I've got right now. But there's a Russian website that I can't pronounce at all, and they've got some fantastic new renders based partly on that little promo video that Toyota put together for us with all the smoke and the big budget for dry ice. And we can see that these headlights feature very prominently in their new renders. Let's take a closer look. So thank you to the artist Nikita. I can't pronounce your last name here. So we've got a pretty modified looking truck compared to the current Tundra, which has been out on the market for a long time. And the most prominent thing that I can see are these LED headlights, this sort of triangular shape headlight. Also the grill itself, we've got a big chunky Toyota piece and we have a big black element in here too. But what is really striking is this piece that goes all the way from the bumper all the way into the hood and we got these three LEDs there. Let's take a look at this and compare it with the current generation Tundra. Let's look at some of the main differences that we can see here. So first off, I see the headlights and the whole nose of the vehicle are quite different than the current vehicle. It's a lot more vertical looking. The whole nose is a lot more of a wall, kind of in line with all of the current domestic pickup trucks. And of course we have these very interesting headlights which don't look like anything else in the market. And I appreciate that, that Toyota is trying to do something a little bit different here. Uh, going down to the bumper, the bumper looks a lot more chunky, a lot more aggressive than the current design. It looks like it's a bigger proportion of the fender, but that just could be the angle of the render. And the actual bumper itself is sort of a big flat slab too. And remember, these are just renders. These are not the final version. So this is just uh, this artist's impression of what they think it's going to look like. So don't take this as the gospel that this is the way it's going to look. I get a lot of comments for people that see renders and they think it's the real deal. Now we've also got this very horizontal style grill here too. And this big element that goes all the way around the front of the, the hood. Now going on to the side, it looks like at least from this impression of this render that this character line going across the from the front to the back is now in the middle of the door as opposed to being a lower on the door and the rear fender looks a bit more chunky too. Let's look at the rear. The biggest thing I see in the back is these fenders seem to have much more of a flare and the taillights of course have this sort of C shape. I don't know if they exactly mirror the front but they certainly sort of line up with the front. I mean it's the rear of a pickup truck. How exciting is it going to be? Let's do a quick comparison between the new one and the current one. I got them side by side so we've got the render on the left. We've got the current generation on the right. The current generation seems to have very traditional conventional style tail lamps. The fender flares are a lot less prominent on the current one. On the render they seem to be a lot more dominant 
I guess you could say, kind of reminds me a little bit of the Dodge product, product to some degree. Now the wheels are obviously the same here too, and the window, especially the rear window, has a little bit more of a curve to it in the render design. So they, there they are, sort of compared side by side. Take that as you will. I think it looks it looks pretty good. What kind of powertrain options are we going to get? We've actually got a lot of information here. We're going to dig into it. We're going to figure it out. I think I've got a pretty good idea of what is coming down the pipeline. So recently, Toyota, one of the Toyota reps, had a little time to spend with Motor Trend magazine. And here is what they had to say regarding the engine choices. Bob Carter, who is the executive vice president of sales of North America, tells us that we are gonna get two powertrains for the Tundra. And he says, the base engine will be a core powertrain that's substantially more powerful in terms of horsepower and torque than the current V8. So let's see what we got right now and let's figure out if we can make some estimations as to what we're gonna get. In the current Tundra, we get both 4x4 and 4x2. Now, some people have pointed out that there is a smaller V8 available, but actually that is not available anymore. Toyota discontinued that, I think in 2019 or so, maybe 2020. It hasn't been available for a little bit, but now we have only the 5.7 liter V8, it makes 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque. So Toyota has essentially said they are going to beat this number. Now to figure out what Toyota has in their stable, what other engines they have, let's look at the brand new Land Cruiser that was announced just this week. I think this is a great looking vehicle. I'm kind of sad that we are not getting this in North America, unfortunately, but the sales just haven't been that hot here for whatever reason. So we've got a pretty significant redesign. In fact, this is the most significant redesign in a long time for the Land Cruiser. This is on a completely different platform. Let's take a look at what the engine choices are for the Land Cruiser, because I think that's gonna give us an insight into what we might expect for the Tundra. I'm considering the Land Cruiser as a source because the Tundra is going to be based on a variation of the same platform that the Land Cruiser is on. This is part of the Toyota new global architecture TNGA this is the GAF part of that platform lineup and the Tundra is going to be part of that lineup too so I think it's safe to assume that the Land Cruiser what power plant it gets it's a good chance that the Tundra is going to get something similar so this is the press release for the Land Cruiser on the international Toyota website it's looking pretty good I can't say that I'm not just a little bit sad that we're not getting it. And we need to take a look at what the engine choices are. So here we are, let me make this a little bit bigger. We've got the venerable 3.5 liter V6 that they have had for a long time. It's been out for, I think since about 2003, but it depends on the market. Please feel free to correct me. And 10 speed automatic transmission with a twin turbo. So in this international form, it's making 415 PS and 650 newton meters of torque. I've done a little bit of math, a little bit of conversion on that, and that comes out to about 409 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. This is, of course, the petrol engine, the gas engine. They also have this diesel engine here as well, which is 3.3 liters, it's a V6 twin turbo, uh, 309 PS, 700, 700 Newton meters of torque. By my calculations, that comes out to 305 horsepower and a pretty whopping 516 pound-feet of torque. 次にパワートレインの性能です。ドライバーの意のままの加速、減速、そしてコントロールのしやすさ、これを追求しました。200系の V8 をはるかにしのぐパワー、トルク、そして経済性を実現しています。Here are some type of dyno graphs from this 3.5 liter gasoline engine. You can see it makes torque at very low RPM, about 1600 RPM. And they're comparing it to the, uh, the current version here, the 5.7 liter. And you can see the torque comes on very quickly and you got a very flat torque curve. And the 3.3 liter diesel, you can see that the torque comes on even sooner and it's even bigger. Very, very flat torque curve all the way up to 3000 RPM. So when Bob Carter says this core powertrain is gonna be substantially more powerful in terms of horsepower and torque than the current V8, I think that's a pretty good bet that we're gonna get a version of that here in North America. Are we gonna get the diesel? Let me know down below in the comments if you think that's gonna happen in North America. But there's gonna be a second powertrain and I'm willing to bet it's not going to be the diesel. 
course I could be wrong, but they say that this other engine is going to blow you away. So Motor Trend is speculating whether that's gonna be a battery, hydrogen, electric powertrain. We don't really know, but let's take a look at what a good possibility for that might be. I'm over here at the Lexus website. I'm looking at the engine choices for the LS, which is their big sedan. And of course we have this 3.5 liter V6 that we just talked about. In this particular configuration, it makes 416 horsepower and about 442 pound-feet of torque. But what I'm interested in, or what I think we might be looking at here for this future Tundra, is a 3.5 liter, perhaps in a hybrid configuration. Here they tell us the total system horsepower is 354 horsepower with an electric motor and of course a battery and we have some sort of mystery torque number over here we don't exactly know what that is we know that toyota has made probably more hybrids than any other manufacturer on the planet right now and toyota is a big proponent of hybrids they sort of had this go slow approach to electrification for quite a while now although i think they've been a little bit surprised at how quickly the industry has kind of ramped up to electrics so i think it's a good bet that we're going to get a hybrid perhaps a very advanced style of hybrid and i don't really have any guesses as to what kind of power it might make we have some other options on the table too. We know that Toyota is really big into this whole hydrogen fuel cell technology. I don't see that as an option at all. You're probably aware or maybe not that there's only a small handful of hydrogen fuel stations across the US. There's a number in California, I think it's in the, in the tens, maybe 30 or something like that. You can't really go outside of California with a hydrogen powered car. So it's definitely not gonna be hydrogen. I'll go down on a record saying that, however, Remember, we got the F-150 Lightning. We have this Lexus LFZ concept and Lexus slash Toyota said they're gonna be bringing a full electric vehicle to market. In fact, they said for this year, they're gonna be introducing, I think two hybrids and one electric, full battery electric vehicle. So I'm wondering if, if it's possible that Toyota might release an electric Tundra, because he did say we're gonna be super impressed and blown away by this thing. Of course, that could be all marketing hyperbole too. However, I think Toyota stands a little bit at risk to sort of lose the electrification game if they don't jump into it. I know not everybody is on board with electrics, but the reality is that there are mandates coming and that the industry is moving over to electrics. Whether you like that or not, it is happening. And I think to be competitive, Toyota might have to introduce an electric, a battery electric vehicle. But let's just poke around just a little bit more here on Top Electric SUV. I think this is an Australian website. They are talking about the Land Cruiser coming to market in Australia. And they're saying that there are going to be three engine choices available here. Uh, the 3.3 the liter twin turbo diesel, we just talked about that, the twin turbo gas engine, and then a normally aspirated four liter v6 too with power and torque tba hmm i wonder what that could be but this is a very interesting statement from sean hanley the vp uh, of sales and marketing of toyota australia and this is with relation to the land cruiser and he says we will continue to evaluate the market in australia and strive towards increasing to a powertrain mix that includes a form of electrification across their vehicle range by 2030 excluding gr and performance models so he has sort of confirmed that there is definitely some type of electrification coming there. So I think the reading the tea leaves here from the various websites, and I've also looked at a Japanese leak website called uh, Best Car Japan, I think it is. They're saying that uh, there's gonna be an electrified version definitely coming for the Land Cruiser. And remember, we're on the same platform. Let's take a look at the platform that uh, this uh, Land Cruiser is on and see what we might infer about the Tundra. DMGの考えに基づいたプラットフォームとエンジン。これらの新規開発であり、そして徹底的な軽量化でした。次に重量配分の適正化と低重心化です。最大の重量物である。エンジン、トランスミッションの搭載位置を車両下方に28ミリ
大幅な軽量化を実現できましたこの世界初の溶接技術には長年ランクルのフレームを作ってきた製造現場の匠たちの溶接技法と知識が織り込まれていますお客様へ安心安全のフレームの強度を安定した品質でお届けするために溶接時の熱影響によって発生する歪みを徹底的に管理することでこのシビアな溶接技術を実現しました。So there's going to be some significant improvements in the chassis. It's going to be significantly lighter by several hundred pounds. That works out to close to 400 pounds, at least in the Land Cruiser. I would expect a little bit less in the Tundra. And they've, they've been able to do this by this new welding technique, which looks very interesting indeed, where they're using less reinforcements. Also, in terms of the suspension, they've done quite a bit of work there too. For the Tundra, I think we can expect some of the suspension improvements that we're seeing in the Land Cruiser. So they're talking about、uh, better wheel articulation and improved off road holding performance through the adoption of EKDSS, the Electronic Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System. There's a version of that in the Toyota 4 Runner, the TRD、uh, Pro. Or the Pro Off Road has this、uh, KDSS and something called Multi Terrain Select. I think we might get a version of that too. Again, I'm just speculating here. This is not exactly proof, but I think these are pretty good assumptions based on the fact that the Toyota tends to repurpose a lot of their things across their different lineups. Looking here at Autoblog, at the rear suspension,、oh, no more leaf springs. I'm seeing what looks to be a coil over. Type setup here, of course, with a solid rear axle, but a coilover setup is going to reduce the weight a little bit. It's going to improve suspension compliance, improve road compliance. Here's a more close up version of this where you can see this、uh, rebound. Looks like a rebound stop here, too. So, looks like we're going to get something a little bit different in the rear suspension than we have been seeing so far in the current version. There have not been a lot of spy photos. Of the upcoming Tundra. We can see here TFL Truck managed to grab、uh, a video or an image of this towing test、uh, fairly recently. And I'm not exactly sure what's in the trailer. And you can see that they are also hiding the rear suspension with these sweepers here, too, which tells me that leads more credence to the idea that we're looking at some type of coil over, some sort of coil spring setup, excuse me, in the rear. So we know it's going to be pretty capable in terms of towing. And I think it's going to be a pretty capable truck overall. It's an image of the gas engine on top and the diesel engine on the bottom from the Land Cruiser. So I think we're going to be able to expect this fairly soon. This is going to be built in the USA in San Antonio, Texas. It's also where the next generation of Sequoia is going to be built too. The full size SUV and production is going to start in November. We're expecting deliveries to dealers sometime in December. Maybe you'll be able to get your hands on one in December, maybe January. I'm not quite sure on the exact timeline. Toyota is going to give us the details, I think, pretty soon. I'm looking for, forward to like a pretty full reveal soon. Let me know what you think of these renders and this truck. My name is Eric. I will see you in the next video. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.